First thing Jesus did, Jesus came to them. I love this. Jesus came to them. As they walked along, talking and moping, Jesus himself came up and started walking with them. Jesus took the initiative to come to them. He didn't sit back and cross his arms and say, why can't these two get with the program? I explained it to them dozens of times. Why won't they believe the empty tomb? Why are they so hard to please? How dumb can you be? He came looking for them. He didn't make them seek him out. And he didn't send a delegation or a representative to say, I'll meet with you guys, but here's where I'll be, and here's when I'll be there. Don't be late. You want to see me? Make some effort to get to me. Sometimes when we're angry, we feel God backs off from us and waits for us to come and make amends. But that's not the way God acts. Jesus wrapped himself in flesh, put on human clothes, and went searching for a couple of broken hearts to heal. And if he'd do that for them, guess who else will do it for? He'll do it for you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and me. We said it last week. Jesus appeared to those who needed him the most. They needed the joy of seeing him alive. They needed to have their shattered hopes and dreams restored. And Jesus came to them. I love that. Secondly, Jesus listened to them. He asked them in verse 17, what are you discussing? What are you talking about that's bothering you so much? And then he listened as they shared their disappointment. And it wasn't a bored, distracted, disinterested, hurry up and let's get this over with kind of listening. The kind of listening that some husbands I know do when their wife is talking. Uh Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. And then they have no idea what she's just said. (laughs) Never happens at my house. (laughs) (laughs) Jesus' listening was the kind of listening, the kind of listening that makes you feel like you are the most important person to him at that moment. That's how Jesus listens. And folks, Jesus remains a good listener. He wants you to tell him your deepest hurts and disappointments and concerns. You can be honest about your feelings and disappointments and angers with God. Read the Psalms. Peter himself said, cast your cares upon him, for he cares to you. Jesus remains a good listener. Talk to him. Express your disappointment. Express your anger. Express your hurt. Express your concern. He can handle it. Thirdly, Jesus explained the scriptures to them. He opened the scriptures to them. Verse 32 says, Jesus began with Moses and all the prophets and explained to us what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. Now you remember what their disappointment was about. Unmet expectations. When God doesn't do for us what we want, disappointment is cured by revamped expectations. And that's what Jesus was doing for them. Reconstructing their expectations. It's fascinating. Jesus' cure for a broken heart was retelling the ancient story of God. Jesus started with Moses and finished with himself. Now, I, I kind of ask myself, why did he do that? Why did he retell the ancient story? Why did he go back 2,000 years to the story of Moses? I think it's because what we need to hear when we are disappointed, when God doesn't do what we want, when our expectations are wrong, we need to hear that God is in control. We need to hear that God knows more about our life than we do. We need to hear that God has an eternal agenda. We need to hear that He won't just fulfill our short-sighted requests. We need to hear that it's not over till God says it's over. We need to hear that life's disappointments are not a reason to bail, but a reason to sit tight and trust. I love what Corey Ten Boom says, or used to say, when the train goes through the tunnel, And the world gets dark. Do you jump off? No. You sit still and trust the engineer to get you through. Jesus opened the scriptures, told them the story of God, so they would know that the sovereign engineer of the universe was still at the controls. They wanted Jesus to free Israel, kick out the Romans. God's plan was to free the world from sin and death. They wanted Jesus to do battle with Pilate and Herod. God's plan was to do battle with Satan and evil. They, God said no to what they wanted and yes to what they needed. God would rather they be temporarily oppressed than eternally lost. And aren't you glad that God knows what he's doing and doesn't cave into our short-sighted expectations? Jesus opened the scriptures and readjusted their expectations. Disappointed? Jesus says, go back and read the ancient story. 
Start with Moses. Is the challenge too great? Read about the crossing of the Red Sea. Too many worries? Read about manna and quail and water from rocks that God supplied on a daily basis. Wounds too deep from unfairness? Read about Joseph. Betrayed, sold into slavery, imprisoned all unjustly, yet forgiving and ministering. Your enemies too powerful? Read about Gideon marching into battle outnumbered 450 to 1 and pulling it off with God's help. Your disappointment too heavy? Read the story of two Emmaus-bound, broken-hearted disciples. The Savior they thought was dead was risen from the dead and walking beside them. And that's the fourth thing Jesus did to relieve their disappointment. Jesus revealed His presence to them. As Jesus talked, these two suddenly realized they were on the edge of the village. It's nearly dark. Jesus acted as if He would keep going. They urged Him, It's late, sir. Stay with us. The day is far spent. And He did. So they took Him home with them, sat down to a meal of bread and cheese and wine. They asked Him to say the blessing before they ate. He takes the bread, thanks God for providing this sustenance for them, They break it, then he breaks it, gives it to them, and in that moment, they know. They knew it was him. This was Jesus. He is still alive and with us. He is alive and with us. And as soon as they recognized him, he was gone. Disappeared before their very eyes. They turned to each other and said, We should have known back there on the road. Weren't our hearts stirred as he talked to us And open the scriptures to us. I've often wondered. Jesus acted as if he was going on when they got to Emmaus. They urged him to stay. I wonder. Had they not invited him. Would he have gone on? Would he have just kept going? Because you know Jesus doesn't intrude where he's not asked. He doesn't force his way in. He is as close to you as he was to them. This morning he is as close to you as he was to them. But he waits for an invitation. He does not force himself in. Well, they jumped up, left their meal uneaten, ran all the way back to Jerusalem, 11 kilometers, and they burst into where the rest of the disciples are assembled. It is true. The Lord is risen. He's alive. He appeared to him. We recognize him at our table. Jesus comes quickest to those who need him the most. And when he does, nothing changes, or nothing stays the same. And you can just write these down. I gave these to you last week, I think. But you didn't have sermon notes last week. When Jesus shows up, healing received. Healing received. They were a broken, defeated, fearful, discouraged pair. But that was replaced with joy and amazement and deep sense of peace. Jesus is the king of joy. The king of joy. The bringer of true peace. Healing received. Perspective restored. All of a sudden, the events that seemed so tragic and awful now begin to make sense. Our God does know what He's doing. We can trust Him. What they saw as tragedy was now triumph. Their perspective is restored after they meet Jesus. And finally, hope renewed. Their mission was established. They thought it was over. The plan and purpose which God had called them and for which they'd left everything to be His followers, this new kingdom, way of life, toast. But Jesus said to them later, You are my witnesses of these things. I'm sending you my ministry that I had while on earth, the things I was doing, I'm leaving in your hands. You get to be the hands and the feet and the voice of Jesus. Hope renewed, mission continues. Well, Jesus is a friend who shows up when life and others let you down, even when God disappoints you, and makes the eternal difference in every circumstance, wherever you are and whatever you're dealing with. So here's the point. In the face of deep disappointment, you can do one of two things. You can hold on to that disappointment, or you can hold on to Christ. We can place our disappointment under the power of the cross and hold on to hope. When we offer our disappointment to Christ, we really place ourselves in the grip of God's grace. In disappointment, Jesus doesn't offer explanation. I came across this line this week. In disappointment, Jesus doesn't offer explanation. He offers something far better. He offers himself. Let him walk along with you through life. That's my invitation. Let him walk and talk with you every day and enjoy the journey. Let us pray.